Hi everyone and welcome to this episode of My Alphabet of Hair. We're about two thirds of the way through the alphabet now and this episode is the letter R which stands for red carpet. And in this episode I am joined by a special guest, the gorgeous Flory White makeup artist who works not only in fashion but also on the red carpet doing makeup for top actresses around the world for all their sort of premieres and press junkets when they're releasing a film. So Flory is joining me. We're going to do total looks today which we haven't done on any of my videos up until now. So it'll be hair and makeup and we're going to give you three looks basically that cover what we think are the most popular red carpet looks right now. So come and meet Flory. Hi Flory. Hi Neil. Are you there? <laughs> Did I just surprise you? Yes, always do. Always do. I know. Um, thanks for doing this with me. My pleasure. So great. Honour. And um, we've been planning this for a little while haven't we actually? Not that and, long. We're, well, pretty, we're pretty spontaneous. We, are, we have to be. A few weeks. Yeah a few planned. weeks definitely. Yeah. So the idea with this video, as I've introduced, is that it's about uh, red carpet looks. Yes. And instead of it just being hair, I decided mm. that it should be hair and makeup and beauty, Good. which is where you and your fabulous work come in. I wanted to sort of talk a little bit about how we work for the red carpet. Yes. Because it's very different to when we're on shoots, isn't mm. it? Which yes. we also do together sometimes. Yes. So I think it's really important to sort of get the message across about how we work when, the, when we are doing somebody for the red copy or for a premiere or, mm. you know, for like a press junket when they're doing a film, right? Yeah. So. But it's a different process, I think, really, because a lot of the time we're being governed by outfits that have already been decided yeah. by the actress and her stylist. And the stylist may not be with us in the hotel room in whatever city we are around the world. And it is sort of very quick collaboration. But also we want to, we want the actress to feel and look comfortable and beautiful but we also want to draw, draw attention mm. for the right reasons so it's I love it because we it's a process that takes three hours sort of max isn't it we yeah. we're like a traveling circus we turn up knock on the hotel door we go in there and there's generally a publicist asking us how long much longer we needed calling up when can they leave so you have to be spontaneous creative efficient yeah. and mindful of time mindful of, and polite and yeah <laughs> <laughs> And be oh, yes. the nicest person on the planet. Absolutely. Yeah. Accommodating. And, and absolutely accommodating. And also, we're working in um, conditions that aren't the same as some studios. We go to studios and they are all set up with the tables, the lights, um, catering. Mm. But we go into a hotel room and there could be like some really thick, beautiful velvet curtains, but we can't see mm. the face or the back of the hair. So you really have to um, adapt very quickly. Mm. And yeah, sometimes, I mean, it's not, they're not the best conditions, but you need to have the best results in them. Yeah. One of the things we discussed, didn't we, when we were doing the looks that we're about to present, is that when we are in the hotel room, for example, mm. the lighting can be very different to then what it is yeah, when yes. they go out onto the red carpet. Yes. Also where they're getting packed and there's lots of flash yes. and things like that. And it's kind of, I think it'd be really good for you to explain as a makeup yes. artist, because I think this is almost more for makeup than hair. Right. But it's important that the makeup works yes. in that environment. Well, I think, I think now most days we all carry a light with us. You do their hair and makeup in a white dressing toweling dressing gown. And sometimes that's, I find it, you have to try and persuade them that what you're doing, yes, maybe looks a bit heavy or looks a bit bright. But you take off the white fluffy dressing gown and put on whatever it could be, red sequins, black velvet, that then changes the levels of the makeup. So then you have to sort of... Because mm. it's about the reflection, isn't it, of yeah. the fabric onto their skin. So, so many different elements. We have to take in so many different elements. But it was just a few years ago and it was working with Rosamund Pike and I think we'd been working in hotels around the world. She would, uh, We'd been on like Jack Meacher, um, Press Junkets and many others, can't remember their names. But we just decided that we needed to take, we'd be doing the makeup in one area of a hotel room, mm. probably not the great lighting, greatest lighting. We'd then go into the bathroom to check the light in there. And then what we started doing was taking pictures of the, um, the hair and makeup at the, at the end with a flash, without a flash, different lights around the room just to check how it would translate. Because mm. we do our best in so the minimum time that we're allocated. But then I always feel as they walk out the hotel door, it's out of our control. However, that's when our work is being judged. Yeah. That's when they walk out and there are, I don't know, up to how many paparazzis I've ever been in a red carpet, I don't know, but they are going to a wall 
of cameras and flashes. From all different angles as well, isn't all it? All different angles. And when she leaves the hotel room, we don't, we don't know what she's doing. She could be on the phone, a hot phone against her face. She could be eating something, smoking a cigarette, drinking. I mean, I've worked all types. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're generally very well behaved. But yeah. you never know. They could be getting into a car that's hot. They could be leaving the hotel in the rain and the snow. I mean, anything mm. could happen. Mm. Yeah. Um, so I always try and give them a little makeup mirror, a little compact mirror, the lipstick, some mints and some blotting paper and they are and they're all professionals really mm. they do know to check themselves if they've been sitting in the car too long stuck in traffic because then when they get out the car that's when we're judged but we said goodbye to them maybe 20 mm. minutes half an hour ago or longer yeah i always remember doing emma watson once oh, for yes. harry potter <sighs> premiere and it was in london and the funny thing was was that we I, we decided to pin all her hair up and I tied all this red elastic into right. her hair That's and fabulous. sprayed it within an inch of its life so it didn't move. And there was like a gale force hurricane <laughs> going on outside. They literally were yeah. all drenched. And of course by the time they arrived they're all like her dress was soaking oh, wet. Gosh. I remember the only thing I remember looking was thinking, her hair didn't move. Okay, <laughs> right, there you go. You won. The, all, right. all that had happened was the, the yeah. red elastic had moved very it's slightly perfect. because she got so blown. But yes. I remember thinking, phew, at least the hair yeah. didn't completely collapse. But One of my favourite times was with Rosamund Pike in um, Sweden. And we decided to do a red lip. And it was before Christmas, I think. But it was either December or January. And it, it was snowing. And there's this beautiful picture of her. I can't remember what she was wearing. can't remember what the hair was like. But I remember she's wearing a red lip. And someone was holding a brolly above her. And it's just one of the most beautiful pictures ever. Mm. So thank you, Mother Nature, for that. (laughs) (laughs) The first look that we've done, do you want to explain? Because I feel like with with what we've done, I've worked it... I feel like I've worked the hair more around the makeup and then the clothes. Right. So, um, because I always think... For actresses, is when they're when they're happy with their makeup, it's much yeah. easier for them to then be happy with their hair. Right, I think. Well, right. and then maybe and think maybe if they're happy with their makeup, they can be more creative with their hair. I think yeah. sometimes. Mm-hmm. But I think for me, it started at um, looking at our lovely actress Tabitha, mm. and then looking at her outfits. And we had there were a few choices, and I think for me, that's where it started. Okay, let's start here with this dress. Mm. Um, and then, because we were recreating red carpet, I then put it in a scenario case of this dress. Perhaps she's an actress in a, what did I say, a serpent vampire yeah, drama. Yeah. Yes, no less. So <laughs> I wanted her to then... And then, so you also want the makeup to reflect not just the film, because that's, you know, that's nice to sort of be an accolade towards the film, that you're proud of your work in the film. Mm. But then you want the actress, you want her character to come through, and, and you want her to be happy. So mm. I think start with that. And I think... We, you know, I went classic, even though it's a vampy classic, let's say. Mm. And that was fun to play with colour on the lips. Then from there, I think then we had a different idea and I think we were going to go for a different outfit. But then we discussed it again and this is what happens in the rooms. Yeah. Then the outfit changed and so did the look and then the hair evolved into mm. this amazing creation. Yeah. And then from there, I think then we had to readdress the third outfit. Okay, which one should you do now? So I think it really felt like we had recreated a press junket of us with the same actress promoting the same film but you want to get everyone's attention each night but still keep it still evolving the look so that she has a real identity Mm. I find I don't want to go into a room and put my stamp on the actress I want to make sure that I'm working with what she wants that Mm. how she wants to reflect herself and her attachment to the film etc so I think we we evolved throughout the day and I Mm. think that I think that's a sign of a success. Yeah. Well, let's go and see what we've done. Okay. Come and have a look. For the first look, we wanted to give Tabitha a serpent vampire killer vibe. As the dress is sequined and Tabitha is wearing a red lip, we decided to keep the hair smooth and slick with a sharp side parting, making her more of an androgynous looking serpent. So it's a juxtaposition against the glamour of the dress and the makeup. So it's over to Flory for the makeup. Always start with cleansed and prepped skin, by which I mean plumped up with moisturiser. At work I generally choose an effective, non-reactive face cream like Augustus Bader. Creating a smooth base aids my makeup application and helps it last longer. Whilst I prep the skin I feel out the subject's bone structure under my fingers, which helps determine the look. An essential in my kit is Blistex Relief Cream, whilst not organic, is an instant fix for dry, flaky lips. I generally have at least three shades concealer warming up on the back of my hand. I apply accordingly. The lightest shade on the inner corner of the eye, which is usually the darkest shadow, is often overlooked. I like to pinpoint areas and blend in with a stippling brush. As shown here, 
I'm using three shades of NARS Creamy Concealer. Then melt any excess product into the skin with my ring finger, which is a lighter touch on the delicate skin around the eyes. I love skin and don't want to mask its texture. So I apply foundation only where it's needed most, the T-zone around the nose, chin and forehead, then blend outwards. So the concentration of the product is where required and lighter where the skin is in less need of coverage. I blend with a large stippling brush with circular movements moving outwards and upwards. I feel this lifts the skin but it's not proven. I then will go back over any areas which may need more coverage. Make sure you also cover the neck in décolletage so that there's no discrepancy in shades and certainly no tide line around the chin. Your base should be a perfection with discretion and a light touch. Today I've chosen to use Dior Backstage Face and Body for the base and also use it down the neck in décolletage. To find your brows to enhance the structure of your face, I'm using Hourglass's Arch Brow Sculpting Pencil, which is waxy, makes the hair stay in place and has a built-in mascara wand. Whilst I don't like graphic solid brows, I'm starting with soft strokes along the roots on the inner underside of the brow, then smaller strokes imitating eyebrow hair. Tabitha has lovely natural brows, so I'm just filling them in slightly instead of changing the shape, brushing through regularly so the product blends into the natural brow. I like the hairs to be brushed up, neatening any stragglers along the top. I spend longer on the first brow creating the desired shape and then quicker on the second brow. For the eyes, I'm sweeping the lighter shade from the inner corner of the eye and following the natural contours of the eye, running the brush along the roots of the lashes and up to the socket and sweeping it up the natural elongation. Here I'm using one of my favourite Serap Beauty Artistic eyeshadow palettes, which I selected the shades myself. And I'm also blending them in with a large artistic shadow brush. I'm using a universal cream shade, which removes any redness from the eyelid. And adding a highlight in the inner corner of the eye makes the eye sparkle on a red carpet. Every makeup look I've ever done, I've always curled the lashes. Today I'm using the Laura Mercier Eyelash Curlers. The effect lengthens the illusion of the lashes and also allows more light into the eyes, again allowing your eyes to sparkle. Make sure you get the tool right into the roots of the lashes. It really is worth investing in a good pair of eyelash curlers. Further enhance the lashes with mascara. I think I've only ever applied black mascara for every red carpet look I've done. The brush really allows you to get into the roots of the lashes. Today I'm using a classic Lancome Hypnose Baby Doll in black. For contour, glow and blush, I'm using one palette, the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. Follow the architecture of your face. Use the dark shades to make your features recede, the light ones to make them pop. The high points of your face will jump out in the paparazzi's flash. Before I start applying colour to the lips, I'll use a tissue to blot the excess product so there's no slip when I apply the Bobbi Brown Lip Liner in red. I outline the lips and then I'll fill them in so the lipstick will stay longer. I highly recommend you always carry a sharpener to make sure all your eye pencils and lip pencils are sharp. I'm using Laura Mercier Rouge Essential in Rose Rouge and I'm applying it with a concealer brush. I like the stiffness you get from a synthetic lip brush and also its fine edge, so I can really get into the angles of the lip. As you can see, I'm using a darker shade of red to the lip liner, and I feel that having the bright lip liner underneath the deeper red, it really gives extra plumpness to the lips. So I'm done for now, so I'm gonna hand Tabitha over to Neil so he can start the hair. Spritz towel dried hair with a primer detangler. Here I'm using the Weller Elastic Force Spray. If you have wavy, curly or coarse hair, add a smoothing product first. Next, blow dry all your hair smooth using a large round bristle brush. You do not need to worry about getting any volume on the roots as the finished look will be very sleek and quite flat. For extra smoothness, I'm using a Gamma Pue Donna Plus straightening iron over the hair, spraying each section with a heat protection hairspray first. 
Finally, I'm spritzing the hair with Redkin Frizz Dismiss Anti-Static Oil Mist from the nape all the way through to the front for that extra gloss and shine. I'm being very generous with the oil mist as I want the hair to look almost wet. Now Tabitha has changed into her dress, Florrie and I will do our final touches where I'll be adding some L'Oreal Techniart Light Ring Shine Spray for extra shine. I now want to make sure everything stays in place, so I'm adding Make Makeup Eyebrow Gel onto the brows and dusting Laura Mercier Translucent Powder around the T-zone so I'm in control of the glow and the shine. Now the look is finished, I've decided that Tabitha's hair could actually take a small hair accessory, so I'm using a green hair clip from the company London Get A Grip. My final check is viewing the look via photos on my phone with and without flash to see how the makeup reads in various lights. Here is Tabitha ready and transformed into the serpent vampire killer vibe on her way to the red carpet. We're all really happy with this look, she looks great, so let's move on to look number two. For this particular look, which we've called the handsome beauty, we decided that Tabitha's hair should be up in a quiff-like shape, sort of more masculine but still with a feminine feel. I've prepped the skin and base as before, so follow those steps. I am then going to use the Etmore Beauty Argan Isles palette in Call Me Soon which are a selection of feminine warm shades to create the rose gold glow I want. For precision, I like to lean on the face, so I protect my hand from the base and concealer with a powder puff on my pinky finger. Here I am again with my faithful mascara, Lancome Hypnose Baby Doll, really working to the roots of the top and lower lashes. The darkness of the lashes will be heightened by the metallic effect on the eyelids. My new favourite trilogy for complexion are the Hourglass Ambient Diffused Bronze Light, Brilliant Strobe Light and Dim Infusion. I add bronzer, highlight and a blush to the cheeks using a Bare Minerals Blusher Brush. These powders are brilliant because they work like a cream but set like a powder. They will stay in place all night. For a quick clean up, I use a Q-tip lightly rolled in CeraVe Facial Moisturising Lotion. This picks up any fallen pigment without dragging the skin. For lips, I've chosen a one-man band, NARS Velvet Matte Lip Pencil in Dance Fever. I'm going to use it to line the lips, outlining the lips with its point and then filling in using the flat side of the point. And now it's over to Neil for hair. On dry hair, I'm going through section by section and spraying with Sam McKnight's texture spray, making sure the roots and ends are sprayed thoroughly. Next, prep where the quiff will be by back brushing the roots of the front sections with a GHD narrow dressing brush or something similar. I'm doing this first because it allows me to know where the quiff will sit. I then clip this hair out of the way so I can prep the rest of the hair and I will come back to this to finish off later. Part the back of the hair down the middle and again back brush the roots on the parting sections to give yourself a base to anchor the rest of the hair to. Do this from the nape of the neck up to just behind the quiff section. Now take a large flat bristle brush and spray the brush with hairspray. Take one side of the hair, brushing the outer surface to smooth it out and then roll this section of hair into the back brushed roots area. Once rolled and you're happy with the placement, take some U pins and place them in the hair to secure it. Repeat this process on the other side, remembering to keep the outer surface of the hair as smooth as possible. Try to get both rolls as close to each other as possible and as even as possible so that they meet in the middle. Around the back section, use the flat bristle brush to smooth out any stray hairs and to blend the two sides together. Once you're happy with the two rolls, move around to the front of the hair to finish off the quiff shape. 
This hair is already back brushed from earlier, so now use a smaller flat bristle brush to sculpt the hair into position. If your hair is long like here, then pin the quiff to the hair behind and you can either tuck in the ends within the two rolls or you can leave the ends out and create a nice shape over where the rolls meet. I'm using a metal ended tail comb to just tweak any final bits of hair. I am touching up the lip which may have moved while Tabitha was sitting getting her hair done and Neil is securing the hair with sand like hairspray which smells delicious by the way. Flory and I are now both reassured that Tabitha's look will last right the way through the evening and especially on the red carpet. And there you have our second red carpet look which we've called the handsome beauty. For our third look we want to maintain the high octane impact of Tabitha's presence on the red carpet so we've created what we like to name the Smoky Bandido. With this look we've decided to create gorgeous soft waves into the hair which I'm going to tie up after Tabitha is dressed. The skin has been cleansed and prepped with Agostinus Bader, the cream, and I'm using NARS Creamy Concealer and Dior Backstage Face and Body for the complexion. As the eyes are so dark, I want to keep the skin light and modern, so I'm using Kevin O'Quan's Glass Glow in two shades, Prism Rose and Crystal. I squirt them onto the back of my hands so the temperature warms up and they apply smoothly onto the skin. I start with Prism Rose in the apples of the cheeks and then apply the crystal shade across the tops of the apples of cheeks or right up into the temples. I also apply the crystal shade down the ridge of the nose onto the cupid's bow and also dab the excess into the outline of the lips which will pronounce the pout. For a real depth to the smokiness I'm using a kit favourite, MAC Coal Pencil in Smolder which is sharp into the hilt and I'm using a finger to gain access into the waterline and to avoid poking the eyeball. Then the now softened tip is used to get the pigment smudged right into the lower lashes. I also want the depth of smokiness on the eyelid, so without absolute precision, I run smolder into the roots of the top lashes too. Now moving on to the real smokiness of the eyes, and you can see I've added more protection to the complexion with a sheet of blotting paper right under the lower lashes. I'm going to be using the MAC Art Library palette in Nude Model, and the pigment I'm going to be using is called Dance in the Dark. I am going to be applying this gradually with light brush movements. I'm following along the natural contours of the eyes, right into the base of the roots of the top lash line, up to the socket and then extending it for a feline effect. Follow the lines where the lash line would extend if it continued. Be patient if it looks patchy, keep blending and perhaps add a little translucent loose powder onto your eyeshadow brush and keep blending. add pigment and drama to the lower lashes. I asked Tabitha to move her eyes around to help me get into the corners and right into the roots of the lashes. Build up the pigment on the outer triangle of the eyelid. This will add depth to the top lash line. It is good to use a mirror to make sure the eyes match. I'm now going to accentuate the lashes with Trish McAvoy High Volume Mascara. Hook the eyelid up with your thumb and wiggle that brush right into the roots. Yet again I'm wearing my trusty compact puff for my ring finger so my body temperature doesn't melt away the base as I work. I have chosen a nude lip to let the eyes take centre stage with this look whilst balancing the elements of the bronze and the glow on the cheeks. I'm using Laura Mercier Rouge Essential in Coral Claire and applying it with a concealer brush for precision. Sometimes in between finishing makeup and starting the hair, there's a few minutes to have a bit of fun. I'll even have to try. Come on in. Come on in. Hey. <laughs> the bad has bit you down. It ain't my fault that I'm out here being, being loose. Gonna blame it on the boots. Gonna blame it on the juice now. <laughs> With time not on our side, let's get back to doing the hair. If starting from towel dried hair, put your hair into a centre parting and blow dry with some root lift and volume, making sure to blow dry the front sections forward so it frames the face more. Now I section the hair off and starting in the nape, spray each section with a heat protection spray, then using a large curling iron and here I'm using the Babyliss Pro Titanium Expression Curling Tong size 38. 
Take largest sections and wrap the hair around the barrel of the tong, leaving for a few seconds in the hair to create a soft wave. If your hair is very straight, remember to bevel the ends of each section with the tong to make sure it doesn't look too straight when it's brushed out. Once all the hair is waved, take a bristled vent brush. Here I'm using the macadamia tunnel vent brush with ball bristles and starting in the nape of the neck, lightly brush the hair through, working your way up to the front. I was planning to tie Tabitha's hair up, but on testing it, as you can see here, I've decided it would be better suited for the total look if her hair was down. This shows you how with any red carpet look, things can change as the look comes together in front of your eyes. For final touches, I'm adding some Sam at Night texture spray to help give me extra volume and a slightly matte texture. Whereas I'm controlling the glow where I want it to be, with a dusting of Laura Mercier translucent powder, and a final application of Lippy. So adios to our smoky bandido as she departs for another adventure on the red carpet. Tabitha is now ready to face the paparazzi. Well, I hope you enjoyed those three looks that we created. Thanks, Flory. That My was pleasure. amazing. I really enjoyed doing those with you. It was really good fun. And going along the screen now is Flory's Instagram. So if you wish to follow her and her amazing work, mm -hmm. it's here. It'll also come up at the end of the video. Also, Flory does these amazing tutorials on herself, mm -hmm. which are fantastic. Get and herself out the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things we do when we're bored at home yes. so yeah if you want to follow flory um here's all her details going across the screen now thanks flory my pleasure and um we will hopefully see you again on another video yes yeah. i've got two tickets for the after show party do you want to come come on then <laughs> <laughs> if you like this video and want to see more then you can subscribe to my youtube channel which is here and you can also follow me on instagram facebook and twitter <laughs>